Hi everyone, good morning, afternoon, where, whatever time zone you're in. Welcome and we're so glad to have you today. My name is Josh Black, I'm APFA National Secretary, and I'm here today with uh, Jeff and Marty, our contract and scheduling chairs, and John Pratt, uh, who's going to be leading this session today to teach you more about the uh, uh, reserve portion of PBS. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to John. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is John Pratt. I am based in Philadelphia. I'm the base council rep in Philadelphia, Philadelphia base. And I've been a flight attendant since 1984 for uh, starting with US Air and now with American Airlines based in Pittsburgh earlier, many years ago. Now I'm based in Philadelphia. Um, what I'd like to do today is just introduce myself, first of all. Um, I've been working with PBS the FOI project, and I was also a fabric specialist, probably on and off for the last uh, seven, eight years, I guess it has been, uh, teaching teaching PBS, and then most recently as a fabric specialist. Um, of course, we all know that uh, fabric is gone. We no longer have fabric anymore. So here I am with uh, very happily with APFA doing kind of what I did in uh, fabric. And uh, what I'd like to do today with you is introduce you to how you bid for your off days in PBS. We're going to keep it very simple, all right? Um, because basically the, the, the rule of thumb with bidding PBS, uh, off days in PBS is you don't overthink it. Keep it simple. If you want more information about PBS and you know, further details, I'm going to show you um, where to find some uh, rule um, uh, resources to use for PBS. Then after we do that, we're going to go through some general guidelines and rules on how to enter your bids into PBS. And then I have three strategies that I use for PBS that I think work pretty well. One of the three strategies will work pretty well for almost all flight attendants out there. And I'm going to show you how it works and we're going to enter some bids. We're going to go live and enter some, some bids. But right now, I really can't emphasize enough about bidding off days in PBS. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. It really is very, very simple. So first, the two resources, um, because we're not going to go into in extensive detail, we're just going to give you enough information to get uh, up and running and get your bids in for February and for all you know, for remaining reserve months. Um, the two resources that I use the most are on, this is APFA.org. And uh, oops, there we go. Uh, this is APFA.org, and if you click at the top here under Departments and then Scheduling, it takes you to the home page for the Scheduling Department for APFA. And then it, right here in the lower right-hand corner, there's an entire section for PBS right in the uh, lower right-hand corner. The other source that I use a lot call the operator, is call the operator. Crew Change. And crew change is found on the flight service website. Sorry about that. I'm get the screen uh, speak turned off. Um, crew change is found on the flight service website. And what crew change is is this is the home page where you can find guides and instructional videos for all six of our scheduling systems. They're right here on the left hand side. For PBS bidding, if you click on preferential bidding. That right here in the up, uh, upper left, that takes you to the PBS homepage. On the left hand side, you will find um, all kinds of links for videos, instructional guides. The most important one is right here. It's the PBS guide. And this, this has all of the details, all of the instructions for bidding and PBS. For our purposes, for February, you're going to want to go to the reserve section in the PBS guide. And that's you just click on the PBS guide and then scroll down to the reserve tab and click on the reserve tab. And that takes you to the reserve section and gives you more detail about what I'm going to discuss today. Let's get started. In PBS, it's very important to understand you're just bidding for your off days. You have 12 days to bid and you prioritize your off days from the most important to the least important using seven layers, using the layer system. Your off days must form a legal pattern for the month. What I mean by all of this is you're given 12 days to bid, 
you have to come up with a legal pattern and I'm going to show you how to do that here in probably I think it's the next slide. And then you prioritize your days. You, you put in layer one are your most important days to have off and then prioritize them where seven is, are the dates that they matter, but not as much. They're, 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 they're the least important. That is all you bid for in PBS are your off days. So let's talk about a legal pattern. What is a legal pattern? There are two rules you have to follow to come up with a legal pattern. The first rule is off days must be in blocks of no more than fewer than two consecutive off days to no more than eight consecutive off days. The second rule is available days must be in blocks of no fewer than three consecutive calendar days to no more than six consecutive calendar days. What I mean by this is you pick a pattern of off days that include the days that you would like to have off. Your blocks of off days can't be fewer than two or more than eight. And then you just, um, actually what I do is I go to one of these websites. I don't know if you can see this. Just print out a blank, a blank, skip, a blank calendar for the bidding month. And I use that. I print out about five or six copies. And then you just plot your off days throughout the month including the days that you went off. So you follow the rule of no fewer than two, no more than eight. And then in between your blocks of off days are your available days. Now your blocks of available days can be no fewer than three and no more than six. And that's really all you do. You just, you come up, that's what we, that's what we, we refer to as a legal pattern. There is one exception. And is if you want to have available days at the end of the month, and one of those available days touches the last day of the month, you can have fewer than three available days. So in other words, if you want to be available for the one day at the end of the month, you can do that. That is the one exception, okay? Something else to keep in mind is PBS does a six day look back in the current month to determine what legal patterns are available for the beginning of the bid month. In other words, what I mean by that is PBS will take a look at what you have during the last six days of the current month, and that determines your legalities for the bid month, for the first week of the bid month, okay? When PBS gets to your seniority, it knows how many patterns there are available to you to bid. It has them preset, okay? In order to reset the legalities for um, uh, reserves, you must have a full calendar day free of duty to reset legalities. I'll talk about this a little bit later in the presentation. We'll, we'll refer back to that. But uh, just keep in mind for now that to reset legalities for available days, you must have a full calendar day free of duty in base. Okay, I'm not going to go into too much detail about flex day golden days. What's important to remember here is of your 12 days, four will be flex days and eight will be golden days. The golden day flex day app, which opens on the 20th of the month after you get your PBS award, will assign flex days and golden days to your schedule. What I suggest to all of you right now is take a screenshot of this screen. This screen is actually goes into detail and gives you the general rules to go by when building your legal line for your PBS bid. When you do that, when you select a legal line, just keep in mind that flex days must be available to be moved to later in the month should scheduling fly you into a flex day. If scheduling flies you into that flex day, that flex day is returned to you later in the month as a golden day. So try and keep that in mind because PBS does take that into consideration when it, it looks for patterns that are available to you. It will take into consideration that it needs to have flex days that are movable to later in the month. Um, Section 10D 18B in the contract has the language actually that covers flex days and golden days. 
Um, that's another resource. I would screenshot this if you if um, if you get a chance and just keep this. Just and as the more you the more bids you put in, the more this will make sense. So let's move on to. Okay, so let's get started with entering a bid. All right, you first start on the reserve tab on the PBS screen. Um, we're going to go live here a little later on and I'll show you exactly where the reserve tab is located on the PBS screen. But you start on the reserve tab, PBS. PBS knows what days and legal patterns are available to you. It gets to your seniority and it knows exactly what days it can use to build a legal line for you. You enter your off days into each layer. You can put a minimum of one to a maximum of 12 in each layer. I don't advise putting all 12 in a layer all together all at once, and I'll get into that and I'll show you why in a little bit. Okay, off days are prioritized using layers one through seven. Dates in layer one are your most important days to have off. Layer seven are your least important days to have off. All days within a layer are considered equal in priority. What that means is if you have five days in layer one, PBS doesn't know that you know one of those five days you would you really, really, really need to have off. OK, if you want to prioritize a single day, you have to put that in its own layer in layer one. So it will look at all five days and it will try and give you all five days. If it if not, if all five days aren't available, it's going to try and give you as many as it can. OK. PBS awards all or as many days as possible from each layer. Your your award is completed. When all 12 days are awarded. What I want to do now is talk a little bit about the process and it, it kind of it, it, it would go back to what I just said about PBS awards as many days as possible in each layer. PBS is cumulative and what I mean by that is. It knows. What days it has to work with and it knows how many patterns there are for you to bid for OK. There's no need to repeat a day off in a later later layer, and here's why. Let's just say for argument's sake, it gets to your seniority and with all of the available days that it has to work with, it has come up with 50 patterns. There are 50 legal patterns that you could hold at your seniority, OK? It takes a look at your days off in layer one. You, let's say you have three days off in layer one. It looks for the patterns that have all three of those days. Let's say it found 30 patterns with all three of your days from layer one. So the 20 other patterns are discarded at that point. It takes those 30 patterns that have those three days, goes to layer two, and this is the cumulative part. It looks at the days off in layer two, and let's say you have three additional days in layer two. It looks to add those days to the days that you were awarded from layer one. So now you're up to six days. Let's say for argument's sake it found 10. Out of the 30 possible legal lines that it took to layer two, there were only 10 that had all six days. So now 20 of the 20 of the lines have been discarded and there's only 10 remaining. It takes those to layer three and looks at the days in layer three. And let's say uh, you had three in the in layer three and all three were available. So now you're up to nine that have been awarded and it takes it down to two patterns. So eight patterns now were discarded. It has two pa patterns that found all nine days from the first three layers. So it takes those two patterns to layer four and it looks at the dates in layer four and to see if one of those two patterns includes those dates in layer four. And it keeps this process going until all 12 dates are awarded and you have your legal line. 
That's why it's important to prioritize your dates through the layers. And it's also important not to repeat dates in later layers, because if you can't hold a date in an earlier layer, such as layer one, you're not going to hold it again in layer two, three, four, five, six, or seven. So let's get started with my three strategies. And I have three strategies that I've been using as a fabric specialist. I um, taught with Jeff Peterson, who's sitting here to my left. He's a, uh, the contract chair, right? Yep, did I get that right? And and we've actually we've come up with three strategies that really work very very well. The first strategy is the easiest. Let's just say February, nothing matters to you. You don't care about days off. You don't have a birthday. You don't have want your weekends off. Nothing, nothing at all matters. No need to bid. I don't advise this. But I mean, it does. There are some flight attendants that just they don't really care about much of anything for their schedule. They don't need to bid. You just let PBS assign you a legal line, and that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Layer two, or strat excuse me, strategy two. This is a strategy I really like. Okay, this is a strategy where you really don't have many days off that you really care about. You may have a doctor's appointment, you may have a birthday party, whatever, maybe one, two, three possible days um, that you went off. And that's really about all you really care about. Um, this is another really good strategy. Um, if you want, if you really don't care about what's going on in the month, I just want to have as many weekend days off as possible. I'll show you how to do that when we, when we go live. But this is another strategy to use. What you do in this case is you prioritize your off days in your first few layers. Let's take an example. Um, a person has a birthday on the 15th of the month. So layer one, it's priority, got to have the birthday off. So you put the 15th in layer one. In layer two, I want to have the day off so I can prepare for the part birthday party. So the 14th goes in layer two. And then the 16th, you're going to be uh, recovering. So the 16th <laughs> goes in layer three. So all you've done was you've prioritized your birthday off in layer one, an additional day right before it, and another additional day right after it in layers two and three. And then the rest of the month doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You don't care. So you just leave layers four, five, six, and seven empty. Because then what happens is PBS will take those three days and if they're available to you, it will take those three days to layer four and finalize your bid with just other days around the month that include the three days that you really um, care about. Um, that's strategy two. Strategy three, this is the one, I'm gonna go into more detail about it when we go live and I'll show you how to build this strategy. This is a strategy for people who wanna build their own bid. They want to build their own line. They have a lot of weekends off. They have a lot of days off, a lot of requirements, obligations for the month. They, they want to build their own line, OK? They create their own legal pattern of off days for the entire month. Keep in mind, when you do this, the pattern must be available to you. If, if those are the, your 12 exact days, it has to be first a legal line, so make sure it is a legal line, and then it has to be available to you, OK? If this is the type of strategy you want to use, this is how I suggest you enter it using all seven layers. OK, you prioritize your days using all seven layers. Layer one has the most important days to have off and layer seven will be your full complete line. So let's take a look at how you enter that bid. You start with layer seven first, believe it or not. Put all 12 days to form that form your legal line. Put them in layer seven. OK, and then what you do is you pick two days, the two days that are the most important to have off, and you put just those two days in layer one. Then you go back to layer second, seven, and you pick the second two days that are most important for you to have off. You put those in layer two. You do the same for layer three. The third most important days, um, two days, put those in layer three, and you keep repeating that up to layer six. 
you had 12 days to bid. What you just did was you prioritized two days in each layer, layers one through six, as what you wanted to have off. And then layer seven, that's your complete legal line of off days. And I'm going to show you how we do that when we go live. Are there, Josh, are there any questions that we want to answer first before we go live? Or let's, you know what, let's go live. Let's go live first, okay? So um, what I have here is we're going to use actually my schedule. All right, let me uh, show you for those of you who are not familiar. You're all familiar with uh, Crew Portal, so let's uh, let's go to PBS. Click monthly bids. And click PBS and when you do that, it takes you directly to the dashboard and the dashboard is the home page for PBS. All right. For those of you who are not familiar with PBS, I'm just going to do a brief review of how to read this page. Upper left hand corner tells you who you're working for first, and then underneath that, it gives your name, uh, <laughs> number, and it's going to give you your status seniority. I'm bidding as a line holder in Philadelphia, so my number is number 200 out of 1,629 line holders. <laughs> uh, I'm old. I'm old. Anyway, if when you're bidding reserve, it's going to stay here in status. It will say reserve. And up here for your status seniority, it will give you your bid number out of how many reserves are anticipated for your base. OK. This number right here is the targeted reserve number for Philadelphia. PBS, uh, well, uh, the planners want 308 reserves for Philadelphia. So if I was bidding reserve, my bid number would be here out of 308. OK. Bid start and end times are right here. That's pretty much self-explanatory. It will tell you the total number of lines that they anticipate having for the month, number of reserves, total bidders. This, this is Philadelphia information because I'm based in Philadelphia. It tells you where you're based. I'm based in Philadelphia. This gives you your qualifications. This is something you might want to pay attention to. Make sure your qualifications are up to date right here. Um, if, if they're not, you want to, I guess, call the training department, right? Just call the training department, Jeff. Well, anything on, on the dashboard, you would just take to the support tab and see because it could yeah. be just somehow just to the that, data issue with right. the dashboard. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm going to show you the support tab in a minute. Um, Jeffrey and I always, we sort of joke when we taught PPS, this is your position within the company. If it says anything other, F, anything other than FA for flight attendant, call your FSM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, it, it will, I've never seen a dashboard that said anything other than FA. OK, status, line holder or reserve. It'll also give you your qualifications. I'm a purser. If you're a language speaker, you would say that speaker and then give your languages here. Um, uh, if you have existing credits such as vacation, that will show here. Uh, targeted line average for Philadelphia for February is 77 hours and 55 minutes. Every base will have a targeted line average, which is listed right here, and that's really about all I'm going to say about that because there's really not all that much more you need to know about that at, at this point, especially as as bidding for reserve. So let's get uh, let's go to bidding reserve. For, uh, let, before we do that, let me show you this calendar right here. This is the line holder calendar that line holders use to bid for off days. OK. We're going to OK, that's what a line holder would do. OK, when you bid for off days for reserves, you do not please, please do not use this calendar. This will not. This is not the calendar for reserves. You must first click on the reserve tab at the top of your screen. Super important. Very important. <laughs> not the days off. What we've had, unfortunately, I've, I've talked to a lot of flight attendants who have used this calendar to enter their off days and that's equal to not having a bid at all because PBS will not recognize this calendar for reserves. So say one more time, John, which one did they use? So they you click on reserve first, go to the reserve tab. And then you click on you use the calendar on the reserve tab. 
And here's a little trick how you know you're using the correct calendar. Notice how each one of the calendar dates in the lower right hand corner has a number. This number represents the total number of reserves scheduling anticipates it will need for that day. OK, so if you're on the calendar with these little reserve numbers in the lower right hand corner, you know you're on the right calendar. OK, so now that we're on the reserve tab, this is where you enter your bids. First things first, you want to make sure you're entering your bids on the correct layer. You can go, you can change layers and go back and forth two ways. You can, um, these are uh, line layers by, by clicking on your lines at the top here and see how it changes um, by layer. Or the other way is on the upper right hand corner, this little down arrow next to layer, you can go directly to whichever layer you want. And we're gonna start with layer one, okay? This is layer one, I've already entered what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the most difficult bid, which is strategy three, somebody who wants to build their own legal line. OK, so I, I know I just said we're going to start with layer one. We're going to start with layer seven because in layer seven, you've already plotted out what your legal line will be and it includes your off days. So layer seven, I've selected the first four days of the month off next week three days three days two days this is the legal pattern notice how these first four days of the month they must be golden days okay i can have two flex days here the seventh and the eighth because they can be moved to either this set of available days or this set of available days they can be moved to later in the month and I can also have a flex day here on the 14th because that's movable to anywhere between the 17th and the 21st, the 24th and the 1st. And I also can have a flex day on the 22nd because that's movable to anywhere from the 24th to the 1st. So I'm all set for flex days. I'm legal for flex days. So I know that this is a possible pattern for me. OK, so I'm good there. So now I want to enter the bid. I change the calendar to layer one. And the most important days that I want off are the first four days of the month. I, I don't want to work the first four days of the month. So I take two days, the 31st and the 1st. I enter them in layer one. OK. You do it this way. Show you how it is. So I'm putting the 31st in. You click on the date. Add bid. OK, and you do the same for the first. So the 31st and the first are taken care of. So now I go back to layer seven. The second and the third. So I'm going to put them in layer two. So I click on layer two, the second, third. And I actually what I did was just just to show that you, you don't have to have only two. You can put as many as you want. You just want to prioritize your dates, uh, layers one through six. So I've actually put in layer two, I put three days, the second, the third, and the eighth. So that's in layer two. So now I go back to layer seven. I know that layer one, layer two, so now layer three, I think I, I believe I selected the seventh and the ninth. Yep, and the 14th. So I, I selected three more from layer seven. I put them in layer three and I go back to layer seven, select more dates, put them in layer four, 15th and 16th. And I just keep going back and forth like that until layer six. The last date is the 23rd. And if you notice, as we go through the layers, I'm not repeating any dates because remember when I said if you put dates in an earlier layer, there's no need to repeat them in later layers because these dates, they're cumulative. If, if you can't hold them in layer one, you're not going to hold them in later layers. So if you go through the layers, see how I have them entered and they're not repeating. And then up to layer six, that's the last date. And then you click on layer seven, you have all 12 days. And uh, that's how you um, that's how you enter what I think is the most difficult one. Now let's just say, uh, uh, let's let's try this. 
Let's go back to layer one. All right. Take these two out. I'm going to show you how. This is going to be strategy two. You want your weekends off. OK, let's just say uh, you let, let's first start with Saturday. So if you want your weekends off and you really don't care about anything else in the remainder of the month, you select all the Saturdays. If you click on the date at the top of the uh, at the top of the column, it selects all Saturdays all at once and let's put them there in layer one. OK. So now we know the rules for off days. You have to have a minimum of two. OK, so that means you have to have either an off day on Friday or an off day on Sunday. So now you have to decide, do I want Fridays and Saturdays off or Saturdays and Sundays off? Let's just say for argument's sake, um, you want Sundays off. So what you're doing is you're directionalizing the direction you want your off days to go. So in layer two, change the calendar to layer two. Ign let's ignore these days. This is from an earlier bid. You're going to select all your Sundays. And they're in layer two. So now what you have in layer one, your Saturdays, and in layer two, you have your Sundays. The rest of the month, the remainder of the month during the week, you really don't care. You don't care if you're available on Mondays or Tuesdays or off on Thursdays or Wednesdays. It, it really doesn't matter. So you're really, you're basically done. So layers three through seven, you can leave blank because what's most important to you are just trying to keep as many Saturdays and Sundays off as possible. And then starting in layer three, PBS will start, uh, will just fill in with the remainder of your um, uh, dates. Let's see, eight, so you'll, it'll, it'll fill in with four more dates for you, starting in layer three, and you're done. So you're just using two layers. Let's see. Um, let's now, I think th those, are, those are the two strategies. The first strategy, <laughs> you don't bid. You don't bid. So let's go to um, uh, the PBS. Very good. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. I'm going to have to go back to the uh, crew portal. Give me one second to get to the crew portal. There it is. Good. Good. So, um, Jeff, a few minutes ago mentioned the support tab. What I want to show to you right now is the support tab and what, uh, how to, uh, uh, if you have problems with your uh, qualifications or problems, something on the dashboard that you disagree with, or if you have a question about P PBS, you would use the support tab function, which is right here under links in the upper right hand corner. Support tab is right at the top of the list. And it, this is actually this is an email function. And what you do is that if it pertains to PBS, you select PBS from system. You actually can use the support tab for all of these systems, for all of the scheduling systems. It's a great tool to know about and use. Um, but for today, PBS bidding, you would select PBS as the system. And then under form type, they have uh, predetermined or uh, uh, subjects that you can select. Since this is, um, you have a question about bidding reserve for February, you would do, use bidding related question right here. And you would click uh, bidding related question. And then you type in your question here in the summary box. You would click submit. And then over here under active forms, you will see this pop up here as a form that has been sent and then what's important to know is your response to your question here will show up in the active forms right here. So you would come back here to the support tab to find out your response. And they're actually really good about getting back. They, they, it's, they'll, usually it's the same day. Um, if you have another PBS question concerning technical issues, reserve award challenge, uh, line holder award challenge, you want challenge your award, award question, it's a great tool to know about, great 
opportunity for us to ask questions and get answers fairly quickly. And you can also do the same for all of the other systems, uh, vacation, TTS, ETB, Rota, Crew Portal, other feedback, base planner, uh, manning and planning. If you have any kind of question for any of these subjects, this is this is what you use. So I think, uh, have I covered everything? There was one question that just came up related to your strategy three, which I think is mm -hmm. actually a good question. The mm -hmm. question was, why did you leave all 12 days off in layer seven? Because aren't you actually repeating them? Because you said don't repeat days off, but your strategy actually suggested leaving them. Yes, layer seven. that's a good question. And it, it does sound like I'm sort of contradicting what I said. <laughs> Let's go back. Uh, I think it's going to be, should still be there. Layer seven, layer one and two, we kind of played with a little bit, so they won't be accurate. But layer seven is now repeating uh, three, four, five, and six. What you're doing is you're you're not using layer seven. You're using layer seven for your own purposes and your own guide to go by. You know that this is a legal pattern in layer seven, so this is your guide and reference point to start with. And then you're taking all 12 of these days and you're prioritizing them in layers one through six. So you're you're technically all 12 of your days are being prioritized, but you're just using six layers and layer seven is just a guide for you to go by. So hopefully if you're lucky, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. Well, like yeah, John. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, hopefully, um, if everything goes according to plan, it will be done in layer six because it will have had the opportunity to process all 12 of your days by layer six. So it's a great question because you're not you're you're actually you're technically only using six layers and the seventh layer you're using for yourself. So really you could, yeah, so really you're using seven as a visual aid to figure out what right. you have to put in your earlier. Right. Layers. Set layer seven as a visual aid for yourself but all 12 days have been entered in the first six layers. So you could delete seven. You could. If you yeah. want to be a purist yeah. to the strategy and adhere <laughs> yeah, to your, your advice of not yeah. repeating, you yeah. can technically delete your bid in layer seven. Yeah, absolutely. And or you could also spread it out just a tiny bit more. Right, And absolutely. use all seven layers That's instead good. of putting two, 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 and two through layer you six. You can do that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that was a good question. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we also have... Some more questions. Good. Um, am I able to select first day of month off on 31st as a single day off since it is the first day of the month coming from a line month? Example 31st off, first, second, third, fourth off. The answer to that would be no, you can't because you have to have a minimum of two calendar days as off days back to back. It, was, it goes back to the off day rule of a minimum of two to a maximum of eight. So if you want just the 31st off, you'll also have to have the first off. Okay. Um, we've, we've gotten a fair amount of questions about bidding um, with vacation time on reserve. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you Let's address that? The Let's do that. Okay. So do we want to just go one question at a time? Yeah, sure. Okay. So sure. the first one, uh, I have 84 hours mm -hmm. or 21 days of vacation for February. Congratulations. That's a lot. <laughs> and, and four VEX days leaving the last five days open. So the first question, we'll take one of these at a time. How many days am I good to fly? Well, Fe February is a 30-day um, month. And let's see, I forget. Uh, Here's the proration chart. Is that what yeah, you're looking for? Yeah, proration chart. Um, we had, did we, we were going to pull it up, right? Yeah, where is it? Oh, you have it. So, yeah. so he's going to show you guys how to go. Josh is going to pull it up. Uh, yeah. here, oh, oh, that's right. Let me, let me pull it up here. Let's go to so, crew change. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, we're going to. Can you show them one more time how you did that? Sure. Just walk them through that. Sure. So he did. You went to crew portal. Start on crew portal. I'm sorry. I'm yep. And you're going to click on links. Click on links. Click on crew change. There's there's actually there are two ways to get to crew change. This is the most direct under links crew change. 
The other way you can go through the flight service website. If you go through the flight service website, you click on the flight service website and crew change is right here. And what is crew change? Crew change is the home page and it's the hub for all six of our scheduling systems. It has all of all the training guides, training videos. It has the resource guides. This is where you go to get more detail about what we um, talked about today. So actually we're to get go into the detail about bidding on for vacation. What you would do is you would go to crew change, click on the preferential bidding system here, click on PBS guides. Full PBS guide. And that takes you to the PBS guide and, and these are all of the all of the chapters discussing everything of PBS and for reserve you would click on the reserve tab. OK. And then what we're doing is we're looking for how many days off I have to bid with vacation days. So you would you have to scroll farther down reserve bidding reserve days off. So under the reserve tab here you would click on bidding reserve days off. And that takes you to the section on how to bid reserve days off. You'll have to scroll down a little farther through it and what we're looking for is a proration table. And scrolling a little farther down. It's in here. Here it is. OK, this is the proration table PBS uses to determine how many off days you have to bid with vacation days. OK, and I think this question you, you said it, 21 days of vacation. I think they had was it 21 it was 21 or days of vacation for 84 hours yeah. and then four VEX days. OK, interesting question. And here I'll show you. I'll uh, show you why. February is a 30 day month. You have um, 24 vacation days. Which means you're available for, for eight days. Right? Did I do the math? Nine days. days. 20, 20 21 months. days, so you're available for nine days. Is right. this a 31 day? It's a 30, 30 day month. 30 day month. Right. Yeah. Right. Nine days. Math right. is hard. <laughs> math is really hard, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the only only old one in the room, so anyway. <laughs> All right, so you're available now for nine days, so you're right here. So that means you only have three days off to bid right here. One will be a flex day. Two will be a golden day. Now, the question also says you used four flex days. When you do that, vex days. Vex, excuse me, vex days. When you use four VEX days, those days are considered golden days and are subtracted from how many days you have to bid. So you have four VEX days and you're only entitled to bid three. So the short answer of this is this is going to be what's referred to as an infeasible solution mm -hmm. and it's going to be awarded uh, manually. More than likely, they're going to take one of your VEX days away from you. So you will have three off days at the end of the month, and you will have six available days for the remainder of the month. The other part of this is you have 84 hours of vacation, 21 times 4, 84, yes, 84 hours. You can't call out of time until you reach 8501. So you're going to be available for a, a one day turn, a one a four turn, a five hours, day, so, yeah. five hours or standby or standby. Correct. Correct. Well, so not really a standby. Yeah. <laughs> this is eh, OK. My personal opinion, I own it. It's me. This is why having vacation during vacation months is, is fairly problematic. During reserve. 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 Excuse me. Vacation during reserve months is problematic. problematic. It's yeah. problematic. If you when you are managing your reserve rotation, if you're on one on one off or one on three off, you when planning for your vacation, which we're actually going to be doing here starting next week, I think in the next two uh, weeks, the next couple of weeks, yeah. next couple of weeks, we start bidding for next year. You might want to try and plan your vacation days when you think you're going to not be on reserve. You want to be a line holder with vacation. OK. When you have vacation days. PBS starts 
prorating the number of days you have left to bid starting with seven days of vacation. What I mean by that is if you have seven or more days of vacation in any given month, PBS will reduce the amount of off days you have to bid as a reserve. That's the primary reason why you really want to your vacation as a line holder. Any, if you have six or fewer vacation days, you will still have the full 12 days to bid. Okay. The caveat that that's a personal opinion. Jeff. Personal opinion. Yes, that's my <laughs> personal opinion. Because there are yes. people who probably disagree and they want yes. to have their vacation they, on their yeah, reserve. And, and that's fine. Right. That's fine. That's my, my personal opinion. So that was a rather, I mean, there's not going to be that many people who have 21 days of vacation on reserve. So right. another question that we just got is how would I bid with 12 days of vacation and four VEX days on reserve? Because that's actually a solvable question and problem. 12, 12 vacation days with okay. four VEX days on reserve. Okay, with four VEX days. Okay, so then you have 12, you have 12 vacation days. So now you come to the chart. It's a 30 day month. So you so now what's uh, you have 12 vacation days, so you're allowed uh, 2018. So you're available for 18 days. So you come down here. So are the VEX days part of the count? No, they are not. Okay. You well, no, because they they become the off days. They're included as off days. Okay. So when you're doing the calculation, of it's just out. vacation days, correct? So you subtract your vacation days from 30. From 30. And that tells you where you fall on the chart. It, exactly. It tells you where you fall under available days. So you're available for 18 days. It's prorated down to you have seven days now to bid as off days, two of which must be flex days, and the five remaining will be golden days. And they've got four <laughs> VEX days. And you have the four VEX days. So, so those are all. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you for reminding me about that. Okay. And here again, this here again is another reason, in my opinion, vacation is problematic during a reserve month. If you use your VEX days, those four days are within those seven days. Okay, so you actually will only have three remaining days to Prepare. bid. So what happens is those four VEX days, they become four of your five golden days. Okay. So you will have three remaining days to bid in PBS. If you, in PBS if you have uh, 12 days of vacation. Or two of which will then have to be flex days. Two of which yeah. will be, yes. So it gets really complicated trying to, you know, create that puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's take a break from vacation. Let's take a vacation from vacation. <laughs> har har. And then do we'll come back to vacation. Um, all right, is it possible to go back to put in a preference for an airport like we used to prior to PBS? I'm LaGuardia based and live in New Jersey, uh, NJ is New Jersey, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to fly out of Newark, but if I request a trip, then I don't get any clicks. Okay, so I, I will put a caveat to this question. We are really only focusing on PBS in this, in this session. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing a session specifically for Rhoda, mm -hmm. a separate one for Rhoda D, because mm -hmm. um, we know both of those are, have a lot of information, and um, we want to give as much time to those topics as we can. But I would say the short answer to that is there is no way to preference right. yes. a co-terminal yeah. ahead of yeah. PBS. When, when you're in a co-terminal base on reserve, you will be held responsible for all, all three. All three. In, the, in this case, it's all three. Yeah. Good. Good question. Um, there was a toggle question. Though. There was a, the, the, the last toggle question. question. If you toggle to line holder while it's a reserve mark, by chance you can hold a line, how do you bid? I think this question is bubble bidding, right. I believe. Or we used the old term is yeah. seven and seven. Yes. We used to use seven and seven. Yes. Yes. Let's go to uh we'll go to my dashboard. I got lots of tabs open here, doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake, I have a status of reserve here, but I want to try as a line holder instead. Okay. If when the LRD tool the, um, was the LRD tool was open, 
from the when is that the, the third to the seventh? The third to the seventh. Third to the seventh. Third to the seventh. If you toggled to line holder, then what I would advise everyone to do is put in two bids, one as a line holder and also one as a reserve. Because what happens is if PBS realizes that it has it has enough time left to add additional line holders, it's first going to look back to the LRD and everybody who toggled to line holder in seniority order will now become line holders. And people who did not toggle to line holder will not be processed. Okay, what the only way they would become a line holder is if they after they went through everyone who who toggled to line holder in the LRD tool, if there is still open time to build lines, then it will start assigning lines in inverse order of seniority up through reserves. Did I say that correctly? Like, yeah, so it, it's I if if your status is reserve, short answer is if your status is reserve and you toggle to line holder during the LRD window, definitely do what, what I call seven and seven. Okay, bid a, uh, seven layers as a line holder and seven layers as a reserve because there is a, still a chance you might become a line holder. Yes. Good. Good. Uh, let's see. Um, we That's did get okay. we got another vacation question. Okay. It says, what happens if I want to bid a legal pattern on vacation, but in order to do that, I need to move my VEX days? How do I do that? If I can't, would the company modify my VEX days? Once the VEX, the VEX you can change VEX days, I believe, up to two months in advance. Two months prior. Right? Yeah, two months prior. After it, if it's closer than two months prior to the month, they can't be changed at all. So once they're in the schedule, and if they're on your PBS calendar, you can't change them. Okay. Yeah. So just in for future reference, I would be careful with how I use my VEX days for that reason, especially if you often we can't predict when reserve is going to grab us if we happen to be kind of you know on the cusp of line holder reserve. But just be careful with your VEX days. Before we take another question, can I'd like to talk about the waiver? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good time to talk about the waiver. If you if when you start on the reserve tab to enter your bids on the reserve calendar, you'll notice you have one waiver to select. OK, waive to allow carryover to be days off. This primarily um, uh, is used by people who are going from line holder to reserve. They have a carryover trip from the previous month into the new month. OK, the first two days actually have a trip from the previous month. The second, let's say it's a three day trip that went out on Sunday, which is the last day of January, and the second and third day are the 31st and the 1st. All of the time on these two days will be if OK, back up. Let's use the waiver. If you want to use the waiver, you click add bid. All right, what happens now is the time on the first and the second will be paid to you as pay no credit above your 75 hour guarantee. OK, it goes above your 75 hour guarantee. However, in exchange for that, these two days will become off days from your 12 days that you have to bid. So if if you have a carryover trip that carries into the first two days of the month and you use this waiver. These two become off days. This time is paid to you as pay no credit and now you will only have 10 days to bid for the remainder of the month. Where people get tripped up with this is a lot of times people use this waiver and they don't realize they're using this waiver. So I want to make sure first that you understand what the waiver does and how to use it. When you first come to the reserve tab, this is how it appears to you. Here's the waiver and it says add bid. It's asking if you want to add the bid. If you want to use it, you click on it. 
the indication, the only indication that we have to know that we've used this waiver is this little toggle button changes to delete bid. It's asking you to delete the bid now because you're using it. A lot of people will click on it back and forth like this, and they forget that they left it on delete bid, which actually activates the waiver. Please just know this is kind of like an on off button over here. Add bid is asking you to add the bid. Delete bid is asking you to delete the bid, and this is your indication. If you see delete bid, this is actually active and you're using it. OK. Good, good. Thank questions? you. Questions? Um, there's another vacation question, which I think is a very good one. Um, it says I have six days of vacation, no VEX days. Am I able to bid one day off immediately after my sixth day of vacation, or do I need to bid two days off? Good question. Every single rule we have in this company and life <laughs> general has an exception. <laughs> and we found an exception. Very good question. Actually, you can have one day touching the beginning or end of a block of vacation days. If so, if you have a block of vacation days, in that case, you can add a single off day. Yep. You can. Good question. You don't have to have the two full days. You can bid for two full off days if you want, but you only you only have to have one. Yep. That's the exception to the rule. We've got a look back question. That's a very good question. Okay. Yeah. All right. My question for you regards the look back at prior month. So in this situation, it's February looking back at January. My end of January schedule looks like this. The 25th through the 30th, they are available to the company to work. With regards to the look back of six days in the prior month, does this mean the 31st and 1st must be two days off? because of the previous six days of work in December, and also then therefore it means third, fourth, and fifth, I have to be available to the company work. How many, how many days um, in Jan the, last, uh, the last end of January they were? So 25th through the 30th. Six days, 25 to 30, we're, 20, we're available. Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, 30. Yep, that's, uh, that's six days. The 30th is in February, so what that scenario is doing is you're forcing the 31st and the 1st to be, excuse me, uh, 31st and the 1st to be off days. So that's a scenario where, think of it this way, the look back, the six day look back is going to look at your legalities to determine what you're legal to do. Are you legal for off days or are you legal for available days? When it does a six day look back, Two things are, could possibly happen. You could be forced into off days at the beginning of the month, and in this scenario, that's what's happening. You're being forced to have the 31st and the 1st as off days. The other thing that could happen, and this isn't this case, but it does the six day look back, and you could possibly be forced into available days at the beginning of the month. If, if you don't have activity at the end of, of the current month, this bidder, uh, this question does, but if you don't have activity at the end of the month and you are legal for available days at the beginning of the new month, the look back will determine that you could possibly be forced into available days due to the legalities of other junior flight attendants. So the situation here is this bidder has six full days of flying at the end of the current month, so they have to have the first and second off. I don't know what the seniority is for this seniority, but for any senior flight attendant to that person that takes away those two off days from anyone senior to them because legalities will always, always supersede seniority with um, in PBS. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's it, it, the six day look back determines your legalities, but it also determines what's available to you. Also, it will it will determine what legal patterns are available to you to bid for. And unfortunately, because it, it it's it, it's not a seniority, it's a, we have a seniority driven system, but in this case, it looks at legalities first. It's a really good question and. The other part of this, uh, so yes, that does mean you do have, to, you'll have to have the first, at least the first two days of the following month off. Because remember, it's 
the, the minimum two rule. It, if you could use this situation to bid for additional days off attached to that, if that's something that you're looking to do. Yeah, and so that's one of the questions. That's part of the question is the third, fourth and fifth. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be on call. If you could hold those days off, you could bid for those two. Yeah. Right. If this bidder, they know now they have six days of working the current month and they have to have two days off at the beginning of the new month. They can add to that. They can add with the second and third if they wanted to in layer one. Yeah. yeah. But OK, um, we have two more questions. Uh, back to vacation. <laughs> How do you bid for a vacation month if you want your quote hard 40 hours to be within your vacation? Then you can drop the trips that fall outside of your vacation on a reserve month and a regular line month. Hope that makes sense. That's very I'm not 100 percent. Well, I'm going to answer that in terms of it being a reserve month. OK, if it's going to be a reserve month, then. The problem is you first of all, to get 40 hours of vacation to cover the hard 40, you have to bid 10 days of vacation. OK, and if you're bidding on reserve in a 30 day month, now you will have 10 days of vacation. Um, and which leaves you only eight off days to bid as a reserve. And uh, the breakdown, let's see, eight. Three of which will be uh, flex days and five golden days. Then the 40 hours goes towards uh, your guarantee, right? Your guarantee, but you won't be able to call out of time. And because you're a reserve, there won't be any trips to drop from your schedule to just stop at 40. You'll be on, you'll be available for the remainder of the month around your vacation days. Um, as a line holder, uh, you, you, if you had uh, 40 hour, 10 days of vacation, 40 hours of vacation, then you would use your target credit range in layer one, 40 to 69, and then uh, block off all of the dates around your vacation day in layer one. That will, the, the, that, that's a little bit more involved. We can get into more detail about that when we do PBS for our line holders. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, I think you kind of touched on this one already. It, it's more of just going to the proration chart. That that chart is really helpful uh, when you have vacation in, in your mm -hmm. reserve month. Yes, yes. And the proration chart is in the PBS guide under the reserve tab. So if it is a vacation month for you, just just follow the proration chart. February is a 30 day month. Uh, last vacation question that just came through touching vacation again. Six days vacation middle of the month. Am I able to bid for only one to two days on prior to touching vacation? Or do I have to have the three days in a row on like normal? You have to have the three days on. The only exception to the three days on is at the end of the month. Um, if you have available days touching the last day of the month. Another question. Um, this is just general for all of us. When will you offer a class like this on uh, Roto, Raps, etc.? Could you really use that? I agree. <laughs> we all could really use that. <laughs> um, we're going to meet after this and start getting dates together um, so that we can really help you guys with that. Yeah. Um, on that note, since we have no more questions coming in, um, we'll thank everyone here today for for your time, mm -hmm. and thank you all for being on. This session will be it, it is recorded. As soon as we're done, we'll be uploading it to the APFA website. We'll send it out as a hotline, and we will um, let you guys know when we we're able to schedule the Rota and Rota D ones. Any parting thoughts? Uh, Keep it simple. Just just don't overthink it. Uh, just uh, if you want to build a line yourself all 12 days, really ask yourself, do I need exactly all 12 of these days? Because the lines, the awards that I see that always have the most trouble are people who build lines themselves. They put all 12 layers, up to all 12 days in layer one, which you, you really shouldn't do. Um, prioritize your days through layers one through seven. And just keep it simple. Right. Awesome. And I would again, if you would go back to your 
your um, dashboard there on PBS, just to reiterate that the reserve tab, because we've seen this so many times as, as a parting comment, just to remind the folks that they're bidding right when you go to PBS, if you back to the PBS one. Now click on the tab up there to the left. PBS sky. No, the, no, the PBS live yeah. dashboard, your live, your yeah. live environment. Yeah. Yeah. Right here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And just right where he has highlighted reserve. Oh, if you're on, bidding me, for reserve, share the screen. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. that, never mind. Hold on, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Oh, no, we're seeing two it seconds. Here. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to use the mouse real quick. And you're good. All right, sorry. Yeah, that would be my single. I think the most important piece of advice that I would give out. Which one? This one. Make sure you're bidding on the reserve tab. Yeah. yeah. Your days right off here. need to be bid on the reserve tab because if you bid them on, as John explained this earlier, but that's honestly, that's what we tell the new hires when we go to visit them. When you click on monthly <laughs> bids, you then you click on the drop down list of PBS. It takes you to the dashboard. Then for reserve, do not use this calendar. You want to click on the reserve tab first and then you use the calendar under the reserve tab your indicator that you're on the correct calendar is each date will have a number in the lower right hand corner which tells you how many reserves are available or that the company would like to have available for that day yeah um for for those of you who hopped on late um thank you for being on you're the reason that why we do this um, like I said previously, this session is recorded and we will send this out on the hotline and it'll also be uploaded to the website. So with that, um, we will see you next time. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Take care.